Hi, everyone. Friday, January 27th. Welcome to Three Things with Spyglass Lending, where we delve a little bit deeper into the real estate and mortgage related industries, not the usual rigmarole, not the usual headlines that you can read yourself, but we're going to talk about it. We're going to try and understand why, what's going on out there. Let's start with this. Number one, this is one of my favorite publications. If you can join this newsletter, I certainly urge you to do so. John Burns Consulting, I think they're one of the best out there. They do a great job. And this is an interesting one because we've talked a lot about construction and we're going to continue, <clears throat> excuse me, continue to do that through the year. But let's take a look at this. Master plan communities, not talked about nearly enough. Um, and you can see from the headline here, why mass building communities outperform, right? So this whole article, and you can read it for yourself, is why are they doing better than single family homes? And especially when the market tightens as it has the past couple of months where we've seen prices decline in certain markets or the expected uh, movement downward or prices coming down uh, across the board, obviously. But you can ultimately see about new home sales and, and, it, and it just talks, NPCs are always doing better essentially than single family homes. And why do they do better when things tighten? Well, it just comes down to this. It's about the amenities. It's really about the fact that people want something around them. They have the parks that are right there. They have schools inside of these master building communities and a number of other amenities that make a big difference. And people are looking for that ease, especially through and after this pandemic, because not only were people moving somewhere else, but if they had to be close, at home or certainly close to home, they wanted to have these amenities and that's what they've done well. And that's why if we go into a recession or if we stay in a long period of, period of time in a down housing market, they can continue to do well as themselves as well. Subscribe to this newsletter, read this for yourself and everything else that comes. By the way, I get no kickback. I have no affiliation with John Burns. I just think they do a good job. And number two, and this is another publication, we've talked about this, this comes right from Scotsman Guide. I'm interested in this. This is a this is a big headline, big, big flip recently, renting versus owning. You see here in a stark, one over year over year reversal, renting is now more affordable than owning where most people in the US live, okay? That is huge because it wasn't the case just a year ago. So you could see right here on paragraph two, the average three bedroom is more affordable than owning a comparably sized medium priced home in 95% of the counties evaluated. That is a huge difference when it was the other way for 60% just last year. Uh, and I'm gonna... Thing I'll add myself back in. It comes down to the expenses. That's that's what we're talking about here. Because if you're thinking about why has this happened, well, number one, the interest rate, of course, it near, it over doubled in a year's period of time, and we know that, and that is just payment shock to the system. But you add in the notion of inflation, what everything costs to run a household, from the food to the utilities, and there is this run back to renting. And again, rents have gone up, prices have come down, so you would think it necessarily could be the other way. But if you're paying that much more for the financing, you're paying that much more to run the household. Well, it could certainly go where you're what you're seeing here uh it's now more affordable to own excuse me to rent than to own okay and number three on the list here and this also probably isn't that unsurprising but we want to talk about why once more mortgage applications increase for the third straight week the reasonable the easy answer to see why on something like that is well the rates have come back down yet again over the past six weeks right we were closer to seven percent if not over for a lot of 30-year programs then it was around and still is six or a little over six and in some cases under six percent uh for the 30-year money and that's going to bring people back to the market certainly but another thing to consider is hey you have dark storm clouds on the horizon, but yet people are out there and still considering buying. Yes, we've heard about dark storm clouds for I don't know how long right now, right? We've heard that there's going to be a recession forever. Everybody's been expecting this. This is going to happen, pandemic related or not. Well, it hasn't quite happened yet. Who knows if it's going to happen this year? Who knows if it's going to be a soft landing? Who knows if it's going to be terrible? So I think people are coming back to the market with the notion that prices have come down. Things are a little bit better for a lot of people. Interest rates have come back down. It's the buying season once more somewhat we're heading in that direction so people are probing now let's put this in uh let's think about this for a moment it's this isn't some massive run-up in, in in mortgage applications it's not back to business as usual it has been for the past couple of years but again the percentages are up people are coming back and we can expect probably that'll continue in, in, until we hit that recession everyone's talking about okay thank you very much for joining me this has been three things with spyglass lending we will of course do it all again next week thank you